All right. So uh, it is shouldn't be at this point any surprise to anybody that Tulsi Gabbard has been getting utterly screwed by the DNC. Um, and she's definitely been getting screwed for whatever reason, only in polling that is conducted or approved or sponsored by the Democratic National Committee. The same Democratic National Committee that she ditched to endorse Bernie Sanders in 2016. Now, I'm pretty sure that has absolutely nothing to do with the animosity from DNC <laughs> towards Tulsi, but I think maybe we should just have the discussion just in case, you know, just so we can remain objective here. Maybe, but I can't, we can't jump to conclusions. Now, Kim Iverson actually did a fantastic video about this a couple of days ago, and Michael Tracy wrote an article about this in Real Clear, Clear Politics. And one of the things that Kim Iverson revealed was that Tulsi has actually, if by, by the DNC's requirements, qualified in about 23 other polls. Those polls are just not accepted by the DNC. And then Michael Tracy reveals to the, us that in New Hampshire, their largest publication, <laughs> and in South Carolina, in their largest publication, Tulsi also qualified in those polls as well. But for whatever reason, in those two very important but very early primary states and the largest publications in those states, Tulsi qualifying, uh, for whatever reason, uh, the, the Democratic Party doesn't, or the DNC will not allow those to be one of the one of the polls that are counted towards the debates. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, what are the requirements for these polls to be counted towards the debates? And I'm going to tell you, we don't fucking know. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know at all. Have no idea. It's, it's, it's secret, basically. And what is the justification for allowing these polls to take precedence over the 135,000 unique individual donations? Uh, we don't know. We have no idea. We have no idea. And we don't understand how that could be used as a mechanism for grassroots movement when you have quantitative numbers like individual. I don't know if y'all think it's easy to get 135 unique donations through only grassroots donations. It is not. It is extremely difficult. And Tulsi did it before anybody else who was only accepting unique donations from people. Because she's the only one other than I think, no, excuse me, Andrew Young did it first. I apologize. I don't think he has any PACs donating to him. So outside of that, Tulsi is the only one who isn't taking any PAC money or super PAC money that got there first, other than Andrew Yang. And Andrew Yang, surprisingly enough, not well, not surprisingly enough, I kind of figured he was going to, he did qualify for the debate. In fact, there's this interesting graphic. If you look at this graphic right here, you see that there are about, this is once again before Julian Castro qualified. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people who have qualified for the debates. Amongst those people are people like Beta O'Rourke, who actually had to relaunch his campaign because he was doing so poorly. Um, Amy Klobuchar, who no, no, nobody knew this woman's name before she announced. And even then, people did not know who she was until she became famous for throwing a comb at somebody after <laughs> eating with it. Um, this is uh, uh, Cory Booker, whose girlfriend is actually more famous than he is. And she's famous, other than her Marvel appearances, is actually famous for endorsing his opponent, Bernie Sanders. Uh, and then, of course, Andrew Yang, which actually makes sense because his online movement, his grassroots movement, he's been campaigning for like two and a half years. So it makes sense. Um, now, there's one thing that all these candidates have in common. When they hit, the, around the time that they hit their 135,000 donation, in our unique donation mark, they were either polling or already polling at 2 to 3% uh, and met the donation, or the, 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 the polling threshold as the donations started piling up, especially if they had a wide array of donations in a bunch of different states. And they qualified. Now, with Tulsi, uh, she's the only one, other than at that point, Julian Castro, who was only a poll away, who hit the unique donation mark last week, and for some reason, did not qualify via the Democratic National Committee's approved polling. Now, Sophia, I'm not a rocket scientist, nor am I a pollster. But do you find that just a little bit suspicious? 
Yeah. I mean, 23 polls is a lot, <laughs> like, to have qualified. And, I mean, it's just weird that the DNC hasn't even disclosed what makes a, a certain type of, you know, certain company of polling, like, polling company yeah. more, I don't know, qualified than the others. I mean, like, what, what, is, what are the distinctions that they're making that – favorite that that they're like okay well this one is better than this one so this is going to be dnc approved what makes mm -hmm. it more i don't know like what what i don't i don't know what why is it a more accurate poll why is it being deemed more uh, accurate than other polls and yeah. and that's a really good question because see you gov does get sponsored by different people when you gov was sponsored by cbs they they like that poll they were okay with it. That's an approved poll. But if the YouVGov poll was sponsored by The Economist, which actually happened, where Tulsi qualified in, oh, no, nah, man, that's not, that's not an approved poll. Hold up, what? Yeah. But it's the same polling agency. And it lets you know that there probably is a, a unifying connection between all the polling uh, that they approved versus the polling that they did not approve. In other words, especially if you know how polling works, there... In these unique uh, uh, polling agencies, well, for one, like CNN, ABC, they all use like the same pollsters. So that's a little bit of a problem, in my opinion. Um, and that's not, but that's actually the norm, believe it or not. That's all, it's always been that way. MSNBC, I believe, uses the same uh, pollsters as CNN and ABC. So it's probably that they have somebody on the inside on all the approved pollsters. Because the ones that they have no control over, Tulsi qualified every time. The ones that they have, the ones that they do have control over, Tulsi, Tulsi has only been able to qualify for two of those polls, despite qualifying in 23 other polls and hitting well over the the 135,000 threshold. I think she's closing in right now on 170,000 unique individual donations. That's how you measure. Yeah. yeah, that's how you measure grassroots support. And fi by the way, those donations are coming from every state. Every state. So, I don't know. It, it's just hard for me to believe that campaigns... Like, now, I want you to also notice in this, in this graphic, same graphic, people like Tim Ryan haven't qualified. Now, why not? Well, not only did they not qualify via the polling threshold, they also didn't qualify. And they're not even close... It is almost like there's a correlation there. If they're not even close to qualifying for the donor threshold, like literally they're way outside of it. And they did not qualify for the polling threshold, likely because they were unable to galvanize grassroots support to qualify for the donor threshold. So if I'm not interesting, interested in spending money, not even a dollar on your campaign to hear your message, I'm probably not going to say your name when they, answer, when they call me and I answer the phone. So that makes sense. But if you have 170,000 people donating to you uniquely. Yeah, I mean, and Castro uh, just qualified through the polling, I believe, right? But I uh, think he yeah. just made it to 130,000 donors. Just hit 130,000. He has 170, almost 170,000. She still hasn't. I, it should be the opposite. Yeah, she hit 130,000 the next day, if I recall. Like, after the debates, she hit 130,000, I believe. Um, yeah. And, and it's not surprising because she was the most Google candidate. Yeah, she she ended did, up yeah. She did um, so what we are seeing, when we're talking about this, by the way, on top of, and I'm covering this in a separate video, but the, the, man, the, the young man who leaked all that information from Google actually wrote an open letter to Tulsi explaining exactly how they screwed, exactly how Google screwed her over uh, with, their, with their algorithm uh, when she was trying to promote ads on her uh, website for the first, after the first debate. So like, if, and once again, do I believe that Tulsi would sue if she did not qualify for this debate? And that is possible 
because she would have a legitimate argument and you can actually expedite that type of lawsuit and it would be news and people would be covering it and they would ultimately end up screwing themselves, which is why I believe, because Tulsi, this is why it's important to show you're a, a fighter very early on. If she did not sue Google the way, I mean, and then didn't even, like, it was like, I'm suing Google and I'm suing them for 50 million. Good God almighty, I couldn't even believe. I was like, girl, shit. Like, but it's, but I guess what it did, it put the DNC on notice. It sets a precedent. Exactly. Like you're not just going to get away with it. Exactly. Exactly. It says the president that she's not going to let them get away with it. And it puts them on notice. If you're going to try to screw me over, you're going to have to fight me every single step of the way. That, that doesn't only include when, it, when we're talking about Google. It doesn't only include big tech in general. It doesn't even only include getting on this debate stage, fighting for time and things like that. Uh, what it also includes is when that election time comes and there's some election fraud, election rigging mm -hmm. taking place, all of a sudden, about it. Yeah. exactly, exactly. So um, what, what, what final words do you have on this? Because I'm like, it's just a headache. I mean, really I'm, I'm just hoping that she's going to make it. And I think that she will take legal action against it. I mean, you know, to have 20, to have qualified, I think maybe today she might've qualified in the 24th one. I'm not hundred percent sure. Well, it would be 24 because she's DNC. the second one. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. Well, I'm saying it would be her second, if she qualified for her second poll right. today, then that would be her 24th poll that she qualified for. Right. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? 20, 24. Yep. And they're like, yeah, but you didn't get the six that we want based off of what? And I guarantee that once again, and this is in, in, and I think, I think they'll let her in. I think that they're going to realize. I think they're going to, yeah. I think they're going like, to be scared of her. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's more drama to keep her out of the debate mm -hmm. to have her in the debate. Mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, y'all have quality control with, uh, with um, your media arm. So why do Tulsi a favor and keep her out? That's what you're doing. Because people will begin to sympathize and see, like, hold up, wait a minute. Underdog. Why, they, why is they, are they doing this to her and none of the other candidates? Mm -hmm. So that's my humble opinion. But hopefully we don't have to have a discussion about a lawsuit. Um, but she only has until the 26th. We'll see. And there are about, what? It's five more days, five more days, uh, and they actually oh the, the a, a few of the qualifying polls that are you know supposed to determine who gets into the debate they haven't been done again in over a month. Why? <laughs> We're trying to figure out who is not getting into the debates and who is getting into the debates right now. You're prioritizing polling. You should be doing a new poll every single week. If that's what's, if it's so important that you're prioritizing it over the quantitative, like definitive unique donation measurement, then why are you not polling or paying for a poll every single week to be conducted to ensure the utmost accuracy? It's because you don't want accuracy. You want the result, the result that you want. So that's how I feel about that. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get all of our notifications if you like that episode of Mikasa Sukasa. You can also help continue to grow our show by donating to our Patreon and helping us hit our goal of 500 patrons. But remember more than anything else, find your balance. Peace.